Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. Hello there. Welcome back. We found ourselves in quite an interesting situation today. Instead of the usual start, I think starting off in a prison will be a lot of fun. Quite an adventurous way to play Team Fortress 2, I believe, but jokes aside, actually welcome back. This is something I've been really, really excited to do for quite a long time. This is one of my favourite games ever. It's got an amazing mix of atmosphere. We've already started out, we've just escaped a prison. Someone dropped a body on us through a window. We have no idea why. There's, there's been no voiceover, no random person telling us. We just have to piece it together. It's amazing. An amazing atmosphere. We can always look through here. This... this is, it's just... there's just a... just a demon right there. I love it. And me... it's so much fun. I'm really, really excited for this. It's uh, something I've been... as I said, something I've been planning to do for a really, really long time, but... To be frank, I felt like I haven't really been ready for it. I've wanted to make sure that I could actually... produce something that I'll be proud to look back in the future. Because, <laughs> as my favourite game, I want to be able to do a playthrough of it. Look back in a few years, look back at it, and just think, holy shit, I'm so glad I did that. It looks like a lot of hard work and effort went into it, and that's hopefully what I want to show off. I want to show off that I can do some... There's a little man in the window up there. <laughs> says, Hello. <laughs> We're about to greet him quite, uh, quite cordially, I believe, but yeah. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. You have to let me know if there's any changes I need to make throughout the playthrough, but... Right now, we're just going to try and do it my way, and my favourite way of playing is being a little bit faster and looser. No, I'm not going to fight this demon with my sword hilt. I'm not that good. <laughs> it takes an awful long time. I've watched a playthrough of that. You can beat that boss with this tiny little sword hilt. It takes like half an hour. I'm not going to do that. We don't have the time for that. We're going to try and speed run this area quite quickly, just to try and get a little bit of introduction stuff left over, because... Yeah, I'm sure if you've either seen this game before, or you've played any game, the tutorial area doesn't tend to be the most interesting thing in the world. This game's a bit different, <laughs> as you might have been able to tell. It's quite popular, and uh, they might have been able to do the tutorial area quite well. As you've seen, there's been a few messages on the floor I've been kind of ignoring. Um, truth be told, those are almost all of the messages you'll ever see in the entire game. And they're basically just instructions on how to play. Like, here you go, backstep. I already know how to do that, so I don't need to read them. It's wonderful. I don't need to watch any silly playthroughs or cutscenes or listen to any NPCs. I can just play. It's amazing. You can just pick it up and go. And as you can see, there's a little trap up there. And it kind of leads your eyes to thinking, hey, what, uh, what's in here? Hello. Oh, shit. Quite a beautiful scene we've actually found ourselves here. A nice little hole in the wall. You know, symbolising hope, maybe, all these rays coming down. And then, you know, in the pit we can see the person who rescued us lying in... probably a pool of their own filth, knowing knowing young Oscar. Immediately just starts off asking if we've lost our sanity. We, you know, blah 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 blah. Great, great, great. Skip all of that. We're an arsehole this playthrough, we're just gonna kick him in the face. Fuck off. Thank you very much for the Estus Flock. Yeah, you're gonna bid farewell, blah 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 blah. He just gave us the Estus Flask. That's this thing. Let's just have a couple of chugs of that. Oh! Shit, there goes all of my healing for the level. Oh well. <laughs> it's almost like I've played this game before and I'm kind of hoping I can beat the first level without dying. Should be fun. Although I've forgotten how to parry, you'll have to forgive me. It's been about six months since I last played, so it's going to take me a little while to remember all the timings. But uh, One of the excellent parts about this game, uh, if you've actually seen the new Zelda, it kind of has a small version of it built in. 
is that you can do a thing called parrying with shields, where if you time against most weapons, you can block them and then get a repost, which does crit damage. It's awesome. They're blocking the way. Another thing is that you can't just like walk through enemies, you actually have to like abuse their AI to try and path around them, and then roll through them. It's really good. Lots of fun. There's loads of like management in the ship. Anyway, on, on with it. Let's try and defeat this boss and get on with our day. Hello, Asylum Demon. We're about to greet him in a very special young way. <laughs> By dropping onto his head and sticking a knife into it. Hello. I don't know how many times I've fought this boss, to be honest. I uh, considered picking up Dark Souls to speedrun a little while ago, but I never got round to it. But I did actually learn how to essentially one-shot this boss. Can't remember how to do it. It involves dropping down on him and then abusing a glitch that makes it so you hit him like twice. So you end up doing a shitload of damage. But uh, as you can see, even though we've just got a flimsy little knife, uh, he seems to occasionally get like a huge chunk of health removed, and that's the bleed effect. This specific knife, the bandit's knife, has a bleed effect built in, and I think if you do a certain amount of damage to build up his bleed, he'll take about 300 damage or something. Really cool. Most of the weapons in, these game, in this game isn't just, you know, they aren't just reskins or anything, they've actually got unique, cool stats to them. So this knife, one of my favourite weapons, just the starter bandit's knife. As you can see, yeah, it does like extra crit because it's a regular. Most weapons do 100 crit. This one does 150 because it's a knife, a dagger, even. It relies on dexterity because it's a dagger. And it has bleed a bit up. It's a lot of fun. This game, I think, I don't know how many weapons there are in it. Hundreds, maybe, dozens, hundreds. And they've all got a unique aspect to them. And I really love that. You can play this game through so many times. Hello? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> He's like, no, don't leave. I wanted to be friends. We're not being friends today, we're going to stab him in the dick and get on with our day. But um, one cool thing is, like, this the, the class we're playing right now, he's built for crits, he's built for being fast, and I love that. He's a play-fast, play-hard character, as the bandit. You can start as, like, eight or something different characters, and I like this one the most. And it's not just because he starts with the most broken weapon in the game, the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the master key. We'll get onto that later, though. There's a little friend in here, by the way. Okay, that was a little bit weird. This is... I don't actually remember what the fans called her. This is a crow. They've been in all the Dark Souls games, and I think Demon Souls, and I'm not entirely sure if they were in Bloodborne, but it's essentially like a recurring NPC. You drop an item on the floor. Uh, in this game, she wants something soft and something hard, so you can give her, you know, jokes aside, or warm and soft, or whatever. You drop a certain item on the ground, and it works as an item exchange. It's quite cool. It's a really cool mechanic, and it's in the first area of the game. As we just, like, sweep around, you can see, like, one of the reasons I love this game so much... It's just, this is the tutorial area. And just look at the visuals. This game's from 2011, mind you. Like, it's already six years old. And they already just give you this huge sense of just, like, just depth and adventure. Like, this, it's beautiful. Look at this. It's clearly, like, a rundown asylum. God knows how long we've been in there. It's full of, like, basically zombies. And what, we like the first people to get here in how long? Hundreds of years? Thousands of years? I don't know. We're, like, the first people to escape. It's awesome. And also, actually, there's, there should be, like, an item around here somewhere, which I'm looking for. I don't actually remember where it is, but I'm not worried if I can't find it. Should just be, like, some souls or something, but looks like we can't find it. Let's jump off a cliff. That sound like fun? Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. Leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. That's going to end it for today. I'm going to immediately record the next episode, where we'll start from here in Firelink Shrine. But that'll end it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do let me know. This is something I'm really, really excited to get through. And just hopefully I'll make something everyone can enjoy, and it'll be a lot of fun. But anyway, that'll be all for today. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.